A startup by definition uh, means just to start something, but of late it has translated into uh, starting a business, but it does not always mean venturing uh, for profits. There are few that come into being to create a social impact. Pakistan enjoys a sweet spot in terms of demographics, i.e. the size of the population of over 220 million that can be leveraged for scaling businesses and changing lives. It is evenly distributed between men and women, but unfortunately, women have traditionally been underrepresented. The equation started to change two decades back when uh, we started to see more and more women enter the corporate landscape. Unfortunately, the equation is still not balanced yet. It is the startup ecosystem that is reducing the gender gap uh, better than initiatives previously. Education has a big role to play here. You educate a woman, you educate a family and a nation. So today we share the story of a woman led social impact enterprise by the name of Putkar and its founder uh, Varda Noor uh, of uh, uh, how uh, she will ask her how she uh, took a gap year from her studies at LUMS and she also happens to be uh, a motorbike rider started the project in a small city of Laya in Punjab. So Varda, what's the story behind Khutkar then? How did you get okay, so, Yeah, so the story starts from 2017 when, uh, when we first started our uh, project in Laya. So it was about educational counseling. Mm -hmm. So we went to different schools and uh, counseled around 8,000 students in the in two years um, on how to apply for different universities on scholarships because uh, that that was the need that identi I identified back then uh, that students need to know um, how they can avail scholarships in uh, different universities outside the year. Uh, so when last year lockdown happened, we started a Russian drive under the same um, platform which was uh, called Future Pakistan. Uh, so uh, once the Russian drive ended, um, I guess it it um, it was uh, for the period of around two to three months. We uh, we fundraised around three million rupees to distribute rations uh, to the families in Leia affected by the lockdown. So once the lockdown ended, uh, then there was a, there was this question that I asked myself: that what's now? So there is a need to start something sustainable. Uh, that impact that creates an impact in the longer run. It's not something which we are giving at the moment. And uh, at the same time, um, uh, the students we counseled back in 2017 and 2018, uh, so they started reaching out to us and they um, and they shared that they got scholarship or something in different universities. But now they are confused on uh, how to manage their food expenditures, their hostel expenditures. So that again was an indication that. Um, and there is a huge, uh, uh, a huge gap for. Uh, so there, there, there is a need for uh, youth to learn skills. So they are able to earn for themselves, and they are able to support their education. And at the same time, um, there, uh, there needs to be something which provides uh, employment opportunities to the people of Laya because it, uh, in the poverty statistics, it is the poorest district of the South Punjab. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when uh, I started thinking about Kutkar. First, we created an e-commerce website uh, where we showcased a few products made by the local women. But uh, then we soon we realized that there is a need to establish a facility where we can also provide them trainings and guide them on how to start their own ventures, uh, not just with us, but uh, without us as well. Uh, so around in no November 2020, we finalized the idea of Putkar House, uh, which is our, which is the first community center in Leia. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so um, it's it's not an idea which is out of the world. People are already training uh, for different stitching skills. They're already doing the, uh, the they are, there are many um, other startups who are training youth for digital skills. Uh, there are libraries in all over all over Pakistan as well, but uh, there was no such facility in Leia. So uh, we we combined all three projects together and built a facility. And uh, now we have um, our first batch graduated last month, and uh, we are hopeful to see okay. further impact in the coming years. Okay, yeah. great. So why Leia then? Why Leia? Okay. There are lots of places in Pakistan that need uh, lots of stuff like this. 
Yeah, so I I belong to Laya, and uh, so I have first hand experience poverty, and uh, because I have been there, I I know the community. I uh, I can like work better, work in a better way there, and I I can start in a better way there. Mm-hmm. So this is this is just a start for Khudkar. Uh, this is our first community center, and uh, we hope to expand the uh, such community centers in. Uh, Uh, south punjab in different uh, cities of the south punjab in different rural areas and then to further areas of pakistan but laya was the starting point because it is my hometown and it was easier to uh, start there okay and you took a gap year uh, to uh, to do that uh, all through the yes pandemic, yeah so uh, when the lockdown happened I, i told you that we were doing the ration drive and uh, when uh, when we were busy with distributing rations my online classes were going on back then so i realized that like it's very difficult to continue working in the same pace if i have the classes alongside the work and uh, and there is an immediate need to do something uh, so uh, and the semester was online so i thought it's better if i take a gap year and continue my studies next year and um, focus this time on building something in the year okay and uh, have you had any help from uh, lums fraternity or any other universities uh yes we we had l- uh, help from lums and uh, from around uh, pakistan because uh, i'm very active on social media and uh, i already uh, was um, uh, i already was engaged in the social work uh, from Two to three years, so there was a good network uh, which I had. So uh, we got support from a number of professors at LAM who helped with advising as well as uh, financial help for the construction of the center. Mm-hmm. And uh, we currently have student volunteers from all over Pakistan who are helping with different things at the community center. Okay. And uh, what are you teaching? I mean, you said uh, uh, you just the first batch just graduated. So, what skills are you teaching them? And is it just women, or is it uh, a mix of population? Okay, so we are doing three things at the center. One is our stitching unit, where we uh, teach women for different stitching skills, uh, stitching and embroidery. Uh, so um, uh, that that is only for women. And then we have a digital lab where we we just provide. access to internet and a computer because uh, people over there uh, don't have the access to um, a good internet and a good uh, a device so we just provide them that access and then we have the uh, orientation sessions with them where we guide them about different online platforms like digi skills gfx mentor there are enablers vbc so we tell them about these different platforms uh, so for the first uh, first month they complete a basic training course for the basic computer training course so they are able to operate the computer and uh, after the first month they choose the course they want to do from any of these online platforms and then they complete in a, it in a period of 5 uh, months and then mm-hmm. move to the freelancing course okay. so, yeah. and uh, so uh, and it's only the first batch obviously uh, there's still time to see some success stories from there uh, uh, how many students does it cater to how many students do you have if you want mm, so i have yeah. you can share pictures even over here because this is going to go online i'm going to post it on linkedin and and youtube and all if you wish you can share them so uh, uh, getting back to it uh, yeah so at stitching we have around 12 women so we have not changed the batch for stitching because like they they completed the basic training for on the simple machines now they will move to the um uh, industrial machines in some uh, in some time so we currently have 12 women mm-hmm. uh for digital uh, literacy classes we we had around 15 students in our first batch uh, around 12 of them completed the course mm-hmm. uh and but currently in our next batch we have around 35 students for digital literacy classes previously we didn't have the uh, e- equal ratio for girls and uh, boys we had uh, a full se- two two full sessions of boys but there were hardly any girls in our, uh, our digital literacy course but uh, this time we were able to uh, achieve the target of full enrollments for the uh, girls sections as well so around 35 students for our digital literacy and then 12 women for stitching okay and does it cost them anything do uh, uh or is it free of charge 
no trainings are free of charge we uh, we, pro- we we even provide stipends to the women who come for stitching mm-hmm. and uh, we are currently looking for uh, more donors to so we can provide the stipends to the digital literacy uh, students as well especially girl students because uh, they have uh, issues around mobility they they don't have the um, uh, they their own vehicles uh, uh, on which they can come to the communities and extra cash to uh, manage their travel expenses so uh, we are also thinking of the po- of possibility of providing them stipends as well all right uh, so uh, uh, just for my understanding and for other viewers understanding so the, uh, basically uh, you train people for stitching or uh, to do uh, magic stuff on uh, online through uh, social media platforms or freelance websites and learn through dg skills and all those kinds of platforms run under ignite and all now uh, uh, how are you funding all of this who's paying for it how i mean yeah. what's the uh, what's the sustenance or uh, sustenance model for hood car like yeah so currently we have around um, 54 donors who, which are mostly students who who have committed a fixed monthly amount for a period of one year mm-hmm. uh, but uh, for in the long term we want to be self sustainable and for that uh, the, our model is that the women who uh, stitch um, uh, cloths at a community center they go live on our online store and then uh, we work with them on the profit sharing basis that uh, uh, the uh, uh, some of the profit go, goes back to those women and the other goes uh, for the center expenses mm-hmm. and similarly we have a, a, a informal contract with our digital literacy students that once they start earning something so they have to give uh, a, a certain percentage of their earnings back to the center and uh, recently the batch which graduated they they have started giving back to the center it's not much at the moment to make us fully mm-hmm. sustainable uh, but it's a good start okay and the model works by uh, whatever skills they've learned like uh, i know on kutkar i've seen the website and stuff the, the whatever say for example they stitch a shirt they just put it on uh, on the website and it sells and uh, whatever uh, they get out of it you keep something for the platform and the rest goes to them what uh, how's that going to yes. work with how's that going to work with people working on freelance platforms Okay, so so for uh, people working on freelance platforms, uh, we we don't have the control over the their uh, income, obviously. Uh, but they they as I mentioned that we have an informal contract with them that they have to give back, and yeah. th- this this is the reason they they start train uh, free trainings at the center. Mm-hmm. So, um, but we are looking at the uh, so we have engaged a few of our students on uh, to our online store as well. they are managing the website and they are doing the marketing of our products so that's another uh, thing that through which they can give back to the center as well so uh, there is no um, control over their cash flow but uh, we expect them to give back something so we can uh, good luck with that yeah and what's the future outlook like where do you see hotkar heading i know you're doing i believe you're doing uh, law at lums uh, yeah so, way much of a difference between uh, the the social impact platform there and what you are studying so what's the future like for hotkar uh, so um for next 2 years we uh, for next 2 to 3 years we are just focusing on um, uh, managing the uh, our managing our operations and uh, setting some sops for the community center so it uh, gets rolling in uh, in a, in the right direction Mm-hmm. and uh, we we want to be self sustainable in next 2 to 3 years and uh, build a strong revenue model for the center mm-hmm. and once uh, we we have achieved that then we uh, we we are planning to work in different domains in 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 laya so we have planned we have planned a charter uh, for the next 10 years uh, in which we we also plan to bring in support for agricultural um, uh, activities happening in laya we also plan to Uh, sport artists to publish themselves and aren't through that so there are different um, uh, different objectives which uh, we plan to cover in next 10 years and uh, which ultimately lead towards our mission of uh, elevating poverty from the yeah and then replicating uh, the similar model in different cities of pakistan okay 
and uh, I saw one of your posts a couple of weeks back uh, you were uh, asking for support from uh, wherever possible uh, uh, what kind of support uh, do you need because uh, like I said uh, if people want to reach out uh, to you through uh, startup talks if possible that will be great uh, it will be a little contribution from us so uh, what kind of support are you looking for Okay, so, so there is a lot that people can support us with. Um, yeah. First thing, name yeah, it, yeah. A, name it. There's a lot of people of Pakistan can do. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the first thing is um, obviously the um, the financial support to sustain our operations for next two years. Uh, but other than that, we we are uh, we are currently looking to collaborate with the uh, with a few companies who can then. Uh, uh, hire or uh, like uh, keep our inter keep our students for a period of uh, some months as interns, so they get a hands-on experience uh, in the industry uh, for their relevant skills. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so we are looking, uh, we are open for the uh, to collaborations for the, with the companies as well. And um, other than that, uh, we uh, we we also need mentors who can also help us uh, refine our processes and advise us further on this model so we are able to um, so we are able to achieve our uh, mission so yeah these are the three main and and the last thing is that we obviously need volunteers to manage different uh, activities happening at the center so uh, for example we, we we need volunteers who can track the progress of our uh, students uh, who are enrolled in different digital literacy programs so uh, these are the four things which we need help with what about hardware uh, what about hardware like computers and all that kind of yeah yeah so so we we want to expand the uh, capacity of our uh, digital lab because uh, uh, in in this batch we had a lot of requests for um, uh, for enrollments we have the space but we don't have the uh, we don't have many uh, computers so uh, we are looking for uh, laptops or computers of good quality to uh, to expand the number of our students okay now, um, uh, the why the startup talks actually started uh, uh, just because you you mentioned uh, that you're looking for mentors as well. And the startup talks actually started because uh, I have no uh, connection with uh, the startup ecosystem. I hadn't and I hadn't any, but over time it developed through uh, uh, social media and through contacts uh, in the corporate uh, uh, side of Pakistan and the sheer influx of uh, uh, queries that have uh, been coming for the past uh, two months uh, since uh, because you obviously re uh, read online as well that uh, there's a lot of funding coming into startups in Pakistan and because of those uh, influx of queries and because uh, it wasn't uh, it was getting difficult for me to manage uh, all those queries I'm sure uh, other people are getting them as well, whoever are associated or the incubation centers. Uh, I know the LUMS uh, incub uh, incubation center at LUMS is doing uh, a wonderful job. Now, to help those um, uh, founders and startups, uh, I thought it uh, best to st uh, uh, start this startup talks uh, platform so that people, uh, whatever business uh, they are trying to build up, whatever problems they have, whatever issues they have, they can come here and uh, talk about them and uh, we'll try and address them. So uh, as far as mentors is con uh, are concerned, you can get quite a few of them from through uh, uh, through LUMS. There, <laughs> there are loads of yes. them. But uh, if there's any help uh, as far as mentoring is concerned, as far as uh, uh, streamlining processes are concerned, how you can scale this, uh, you can uh, reach out to me anytime. Just pop in a message and we'll take care of that. And uh, uh, with regards to the help that you are looking for, right? All the uh, four or five things that you mentioned, if people want to reach out to you, how uh, is that going to work? Should they uh, reach you online, uh, uh, LinkedIn or something, or is there a contact uh, number or something like that? If there is, you can just message me. When I post this online, I'll share that information as well. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. Sure. They can reach out to me at LinkedIn as well. I'll also share my number with you. Okay. So, what's the story behind riding a motorbike then? Okay. So it was more. <laughs> it was more of a passion. I I loved. Uh, I loved seeing my brothers ride a bike. So mm -hmm. I wanted to learn it. Um, I kept delaying it for like two years. Mm -hmm. 
बट देन अबू ने बोला कि नहीं आज चलो एंड मैं सिखा के आऊंगा तो देन आई लर्न बाइक राइडिंग उसके बाद सो आई वेंट टू डिफरेंट सिटीज ऑन माई बाइक एंड नाउ आई यूज इट एज एवरी डे मोड ट्रांसपोर्ट and uh, oh, because obviously what you are doing is very motivational you don't see a lot of women first of all uh, uh, that uh, are into the corporate side of things they don't you don't see many women who are starting businesses or who are running uh, social impact startups there are few of them now but in uh, when i was your age there was uh, nothing like that and which is a good thing and so do you have any a uh, message uh, for all the girls um, the young girls who are because they study they get and after that they get married and they settle down at home but very few of them they do venture out what message do you have for those people uh, who can uh, get inspiration from you from what you are doing and how they can go about it yeah so um what what i personally experienced as well is that uh, most most of the girls have dreams they want to do something but then they are discouraged by the society that uh, maybe the thing that the one thing that helped me as well and i believe in it is that if you dream the universe conspires to uh, to help you so just dream and then fight for your dreams it, it is not impossible and you can do it as well if Uh, if if people like me are doing there are many other women who are um who are working in the uh, social sector and uh, other sectors so you can do it well you can do it as well and you just have to fight for it okay great so um, i think we'll uh, call it a day here uh, then varda thank you very much for being here on startup talks uh, your story is really inspirational i hope others uh, uh, do benefit from this and uh, Mm, uh, best of luck with your studies and with Khudkar as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for being okay. here. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Okay. Now, Fiz.